if we go back to our original scripture, it's, it's a study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman not needed to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The written word is divided in times and seasons and realms, but the living word is the body. And this is something that we cannot divide. Jesus came and he said, I am, I am as a person. He is the way, the truth and the life. He did not bring it. If he brought a way or he brought a truth, maybe you could separate it, but you can't because you can't, you can't break up his body. His body was broken. He said to Peter, Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed to you that I am the Christ. And on this rock, I will build my church. What is the rock? Peter? No, this is wrongly dividing the word. Because 1 Corinthians 10 says, the rock that followed them. Where did this rock came from? When Moses was on the mountain, God said, there is a place beside me on the rock. And we know Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And this rock followed them all the way. Now, in Babylon, when the dream was revealed to Nebuchadnezzar, he said, O king, Daniel said to the king, Daniel said, O king, there's a rock that was cut loose from the mountain. That was the rock from Moses. It was going to hit the statue and the statue is going to crumble up. It's going to break up. It's, the dividing is going to be to destruction. But the rock is going to bring a, a dividing that's going to build into a mountain that's going to fill all the earth. Wow, this is all the volume of the book. You cannot get away from it. So in the desert, I'm telling you, 6,000 men without women and children, and they want water in a desert. There's no tap. There's no dam. There's no nothing. God said to Moses, I'm going to go to the rock at Horeb. And I'm going to stand in front of you and you're going to hit the rock. So what is it going to do? He's actually going to hit God and split the rock. When Moses hit the rock, they say the water gushed from beneath. It splitted the rock at Horeb. And there was water for all those millions in the desert. It must have been such an experience. You know, in my wildest dream, I cannot think that you don't want to take your promised land and you are scared of people and you tell them they are like grasshoppers. So that is why John ate grasshoppers and honey. I think he took the grasshoppers, dipped it in honey because Jesus is like honey in the mouth. So he took the bitter and the sweet. So these people didn't want to take the bitter and the sweet together. Now, when this rock was split, there was provision for everybody. Now, that same rod that hit the rock in the same chapter, the Amalekites came and they warred with him. And Moses went up a rock, up the rock, and he lifted up his rod and his hands became tired. And they put a rock underneath him and he sat and they held up his hands till the sun went down. And the battle with the Amalekites was a victorious one. Now, this is a picture of Christ on the cross. <laughs> he had to stay there till the end. This same rod, when the serpents got them in the desert, God said, put up a pole and put a, a copper serpent up on the pole. And those that intentively look at it will be healed. So these are all pictures of Christ. He, he, was, he was the rock that was split. <laughs> He's the rock of our salvation. We can hide in the cleft of the rock. He was the rock that was split because he literally became sin. He didn't come and wash our sins away. He became sin and he took our sin. Nobody can give it ever back to us again. And this is like to understand what the living word is. You cannot divide this body again. Because the second time the people wanted to um, stone Moses for wanting water, he went to the rock again and God said, speak to the rock. And Moses went and he hit the rock again. 
And because of that, he could never enter the promised land because you cannot, you cannot break the body a second time. If you forget about all the things God has done for you, you like a dog turning back to its vomit. And it's like you crucify the Lord again. That's why now the word of faith is in our mouth to speak it. We do not have to go and crucify Christ again. We have to have our eyes on him and speak life, speak life. Salvation and faith is now within us our very mouths. The words that I, we speak becomes his words. The road that we travel becomes the road he travel. You see, when we divide a body, it's a problem. You, a body has a heart. A body has a nervous system. A body has a heart flow. The message Bible says, as a cut off finger or a chopped off toe, you will not amount to anything, but you will actually rot. You will, the cell division will be unto destruction. But as long as you connect it to the body, there's a cell division that leads to life because it's growth. There was never ever division between anything that God created in the perfect day. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word came from him, but they were still one. God is one God. There was never a division between them. The spirit was never cut off from the father. Creation was never cut off from the spirit. The cut off came with Adam's fall. But now it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. It is the spirit word, the word was with God. But if you read in John 1, 14, it says, the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the spirit word took on human form, the man, the ox, the eagle and the lamb, and he dwelled with us, he says, uh, in 1 John 1, we have seen life manifesting. We have touched him. We have handled him. But you know what? They did not receive him. Jesus became the Christ, the body of God manifesting. In other words, he came and he dwelled amongst man. But because man didn't receive him, he now became the Melchizedek, the spirit manifested body. <laughs> Melchizedek is literally the spirit body that can manifest. And he is sitting at the right hand of the father, waiting for us to grow into this full stature, to step into him. But he carries the spirit of truth. Now, if we divide the body, we have problems. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God was never separated from the Spirit, and the creation was never separated from God. Only after Adam, the separation came. But now he says in verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelled amongst us. And we have to discern what the Word is. The Word has got character, and the Word has got fruit. You can't separate fruit and you can't separate character. For instance, if I take you to in John 1, 17, he says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, grace and truth is character. If you take law and grace and truth, the division comes between law and grace and truth. You cannot divide grace and truth. When you divide grace and truth, you have a movement. If you have a movement, <laughs> you have no heart. You have no blood flow. You have no <laughs> nervous system. You don't have something that grows. A movement is like a wave that goes out on the sea. It just goes out in breaking up. Now, the church is a body. It's not a movement. Grace is is a part of the body. It's not a movement. Faith is part of the body. It's not a movement. A movement does not have a heart. 
Now, God says we must guard our hearts more than anything else. So this is why people can go for miracles and yet they don't have really a real, a, a real relationship with God because they've understood how the gifts work and they've tried to separate the gifts from the body. But you cannot have the gifts without love. You cannot have <laughs> the gifts without patience. You cannot separate the gifts from the body. So that is when Jesus, they came to Jesus and they said, well, in your name, we have driven devils out and we have healed the sick. He says, go away. I don't know you. You have to be part of his body and grow in his body. And that takes some dying because as Nebuchadnezzar wanted to be a body on himself and he was cut down, this is what constantly happens to humanity. God just, you, you are chopped down, not of God's doing now, of your own doing. He says, this is the judgment. Light has come in, but people choose darkness more than light. Guys, you cannot separate the way, the truth, the life. You cannot separate grace and mercy. You cannot separate faith, hope, and love. You cannot separate grace and glory. You have to grow into the fullness of the full stature of the Christ. And by the way, all the gifts are to edify the body, not to edify the ego. Everything we do needs to be there to edify others.